The British television comedy Red Dwarf prominently features many different spaceships. The three principal ships are the Red Dwarf ship itself and its two main types of shuttlecraft, known as Starbug and Blue Midget. Several other ships have appeared for one or two episodes only but are nonetheless important to Red Dwarf continuity. Several spaceships have been seen only in one episode, and a few ships have also been mentioned but not seen. Topic. Main ships Topic. Red Dwarf The eponymous spaceship Red Dwarf is an enormous mining vessel owned by the Jupiter Mining Corporation. In the first episode, The End, 1988, and in some episodes early in the series chronologically set before the first episode, it is commanded by Captain Frank Hollister. For most of the show, second technician Arnold Rimmer is the self-imposed commander of this ship following the captain's off-screen death in The End, despite Rimmer being a deceased hologram. Holly says in both Me Squared, 1988, and Thanks for the Memory. 1988 that the ship has enough food and drink to last 30,000 years, but in Thanks for the Memory, he says they have run out of shake and vac, and in Me Squared, he claims there is only one after eight mint left, and everyone is too polite to take it. In the novel Red Dwarf, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers 1989, the ship is described as being 6 miles 10 kilometers long, 4 miles 6.5 kilometers tall, and 3 miles 5 kilometers wide. However, in the episode, DNA, 1991, the cat describes the ship as being 5 miles 8 kilometers long. The jagged shape and dull red color of the vessel has led to the vessel being described in the episode, P. Sirens, 1993, as a gigantic red trash can. All of Red Dwarf's systems are controlled by the computer Holly, although in Back to Earth 2009, Holly is depicted as being non-functioning after being washed out by a nine-year overflowing bath, and is still evidently non-functioning as of Twentyka, 2016. The last mention of Holly is in Fathers and Sons. 2012, when Crichton mentions that he misses him. In Series 10 the ship is instead run by the JMC onboard computer in Holly's absence. The onboard computer is not a character but rather an automated system that does not seem to have artificial intelligence and behaves as if the ship is still fully staffed and operating normally, at one point even threatening to demote Rimmer for not showing up to work in three million years, a small asteroid is embedded in Red Dwarf's underbelly. Upon the reconstruction of Red Dwarf in Series 8, there are two asteroids. The asteroids are being mined, rather than accidental strikes resulting in fusion with the ship's structure. The scoop on the front of the ship sucks hydrogen from the currents in space and converts it into fuel like a bussard ramjet and can, theoretically, keep going forever. At the start of the series, it has been traveling for roughly three million years. Red Dwarf has a large complement of shuttles, including Starbugs and Blue Midgets. Another shuttle type only mentioned in the novels but never so much as mentioned on the television series is White Giant. The first episode, The End. 
mentions that Red Dwarf has botanical gardens. When third class technician Dave Lister and second class technician Arnold Rimmer are sent off to repair a faulty power circuit, there, the crew size is repeatedly stated in series 1 to have been 169, but in the episode, Justice. 1991, Rimmer is charged and convicted for the second-degree murder of 1,167 people after negligence in failing to reseal a drive plate, which was first mentioned in The End, resulted in the deaths of the entire crew Lister and Rimmer not being counted in the charges, although this retcon was implicitly reversed by Lister giving his crew number as 00169 in The Inquisitor, 1992, Time Wave, 2017, again states the number of people Rimmer killed after misrepairing the drive plate as over a thousand. In Back in the Red, 1999, Holly reveals that there are 400 people in a classified prison on the secret floor 13. Red Dwarf itself is the main setting for every series save for V and 7, which take place on Starbug. Red Dwarf is revealed to have been stolen in the sixth series premiere, P Sirens. In the series 7 finale, Nanarchy. 1997, it is discovered that a collective of rogue nanobots which form the mechanoid Crichton's auto repair system dismantled Red Dwarf and created their own nano version of the ship. The crew chase this nano version of the ship in Starbug and eventually convince the nanobots to rebuild the ship. In Back in the Red, Holly reveals that he created a new set of nanobots to resurrect the dead crew as well. This causes some disorientation among the formerly dead denizens of the reconstructed Red Dwarf, including the reinstated captain. The rebuilt ship is based on the original specifications, before the Jupiter Mining Corporation made cutbacks, meaning it becomes even larger than the Red Dwarf of the first five series, with a quark-level matter, antimatter generator and a karaoke bar on level 6. This was classified information that was repeated to a crew member by the coffee machine on G-Deck. This version of the ship was also retconned into the remastered editions of Series 1-3, which replaced the original model shots with new CGI equivalents. After a corrosive microbe nearly destroys Red Dwarf in Only the Good. 1999, with Lister, Kat, Crichton and Christine Kochansky shown escaping into a mirror universe and Rimmer left behind to die, the ship is seen intact and fully functional again nine years later in the narrative in the special Back to Earth, with only Lister, Rimmer, Kat and Crichton on board, and Kochansky absent, but revealed to have survived. Exactly how the ship was saved from destruction is not explained, although in The Beginning, 2012, Rimmer claims that he saved Red Dwarf from the microbe. Crichton says that Rimmer shouldn't take the credit for what had happened, while the cat describes the event as a total fluke. On two occasions, Rimmer and Crichton try to clarify what happened specifically, but they are respectively interrupted by the cat and Hoagie the Rogie. Beginning in Series 10, miniatures replaced CGI as the show's primary visual effects for the first time since Series 6. As the original Red Dwarf models had long since been destroyed, the last in existence built for and blown up in the Series 5 episode, Demons and Angels, 1992, the long unused model originally built for the remastered Series 1-3 was taken out of storage and shortened. 
Though the model was now both much closer in shape and even the same 8-foot length as the Series 1 original, the overall physical features of the ship, most noticeably the ram scoop and rear thrusters, are those of the re-mastered, Series 8 design. In the Series 11 episode, Twentica, 2016, Rimmer again identifies himself as the acting senior officer of Red Dwarf. Topic. Notable areas Notable areas of the ship over the past series include Rimmer and Lister's original sleeping quarters the main setting for the first two series. A gray room with bunk beds built into the wall, a table, two lockers, a sink with a mirror that also acts as a computer screen and a voice-activated toilet. It made a reappearance in the first episode of Series 8. This room was used as the background for The Red Dwarf, the Body Snatcher Collection DVD cover. Rimmer and Lister's second sleeping quarters. In Series 3, they relocate to a room in the unused officer's block, substantially larger, with a cream color scheme and ensuite shower as well as classier versions of much of the apparatus from their original quarters. This room was used as the background for the Red Dwarf Series 4 DVD cover. Rimmer and Lister's third sleeping quarters. In the 2009 special Back to Earth, the crew once again moved to a new sleeping area. This new room is white and features a console in the center of the room that is reminiscent of the TARDIS console seen in Doctor Who. This room also features a large window that takes up one entire wall. Rimmer and Lister's Fourth Sleeping Quarters Series 10, Rimmer and Lister relocate again to a large sleeping quarters, this time with a dark red and black color scheme. It has many of the same features as previous quarters, but also includes a red and black leather sofa and a TV mounted to the ceiling. Level 147 Appearing to have been the nerve center of the vessel, it contained the central drive room, the navigational control center of the ship, where Christine Kochansky used to work as well as the other senior officers. The central drive room also contains the Navicomp, the ship's navigational computer, and several computer monitors which Holly used to project his, her image and communicate with the crew. Captain Frank Hollister's office is also on floor 147, next to the central drive room. The stasis booth in which Dave Lister is frozen in suspended animation for three million years is also on level 147. Level 592 contains the hologram projection suite, according to Holly in the episode, Gweek. 1988. In Thanks for the Memory, 1988, Lister goes here to give Rimmer eight months' worth of his memories. In The Week, a meteor strikes the ship on level 592, damaging the hologram suite, which results in some erratic behavior by Rimmer until the damage is corrected by Lister. The Series 10 Drive Room. A highly utilized room in Series 10, set up much like the Starbug cockpit with four seats and panels at each. Used for both casual dialogue and serious plot-driven scenes. The Science Room. The crew's main area of conducting technical business such as mind swaps and consultations with Holly, the ship's computer, in Series 3V. The cargo bay. The area of the ship where the fleets of Starbugs and Blue Midgets are stored and from where these ships launch and land. White Corridor 159. 
the initial site of the accident that wiped out the crew. It is where Lister collapses in the episode, Confidence and Paranoia, 1988. There is another stasis booth visible during this scene on level 159. The Copacabana Cocktail Bar where Lister and his drinking buddies Peterson, Chen, and Selby often met to drink. Seen in various episodes of Series 1. Parrot's Bar. A wine bar on G Deck, apparently named purely for a Casablanca gag. We'll always have parrots. This area was seen in the episode, Camille, 1991. The tank. A 200 cell prison on the top secret floor 13 of Red Dwarf, which held in custody 400 hardened criminals on their way to a penal colony on Adelphi 12. However, when the nanobots rebuild Red Dwarf in Nanarchy, 1997, they are seen doing so to original JMC plans according to Back in the Red, 1999, also rebuilding the tank in the process and resurrecting the inmates of the prison too. The tank is the main setting for Series 8 as the regular cast are imprisoned there. The tank was used as the background for the cover of the Red Dwarf Series 8 DVD. Topic. Blue Midget Blue Midget is a type of shuttle which Red Dwarf carries. Its fuselage resembles that of a Chinook helicopter, although it also has features of a truck or tank as it features caterpillar tracks and a bumper sticker that reads, My other spaceship is a Red Dwarf and its cockpit can hold a maximum of four people. Blue Midget was the only shuttlecraft used for Series 2, and it was used as the background for the Red Dwarf Series 2 DVD cover. By Series 3, and the introduction of Crichton as a main character, a bigger shuttle was needed and Blue Midget faded into the background, only featuring in two episodes of Series 3 and not showing up at all again until Series 8. In Series 10 it took over again as primary shuttle craft, even prominently featuring in the opening titles. As of Series 11, however, Starbug has taken the position back again and Blue Midget did not feature. For Red Dwarf Remastered, Blue Midget was completely redesigned to resemble a bubble car with retractable legs used for taking off and walking, replacing the caterpillar tracks, and small arms. The new design was also used for Blue Midget's reappearance in Series 8, where the ship gained its third, substantially larger cockpit. This came in tandem with Crichton's Nanobots reconstruction of Red Dwarf, also with a complete redesign. The Walker design carried over when the ship reappeared in Series 10, though the legs and arms do not feature. This time the physical model originally built for Red Dwarf Remastered, which had never been used, replaced the CGI version. The cockpit was again given a redesign more akin to that of the Series 6-7 Starbug cockpit with four seats. The set itself was a heavy modification of the Series 10 drive room. Topic. Novels Blue Midget also features in the first two Red Dwarf novels. In the second novel Better Than Life 1990, after a polymorph finds its way aboard the shuttlecraft, the craft is made to self-destruct at the insistence of Lister. Topic. Starbug 
The Jupiter Mining Corporation transport vehicle Starbug is a relatively small shuttlecraft, green in color. It has three bulbous sections, the cockpit, midsection and engine rooms, somewhat resembling a bug from the exterior. Beginning with its introduction in Series 3, Starbug replaces Blue Midget as the crew's primary choice of shuttle except when Blue Midget took the position for Series 10 Starbug replaces Red Dwarf as the main setting of the show throughout Series 6 and 7. The episode, Backwards, 1989, mentions a Starbug 1 as well as a Starbug 2, though Starbug 2 is only ever seen in, Back to Reality, 1992. The original Red Dwarf is equipped with at least four Starbug vessels, as Starbugs are abandoned in the episodes, Backwards, and Terrorform. 1992 as a result of crashes by Rimmer and Crichton, with Lister and Cat retrieving the two in another Starbug both times, and in Body Swap 1989 after Rimmer, using Lister's body, crashes it and is retrieved by the others in Blue Midget. The reconstructed Red Dwarf, according to the Series 8 Back in the Red episode, contains an entire fleet of Starbugs and Blue Midgets, but the nanobots reconstructed Red Dwarf to its original design specifications prior to the fleet being shown. Starbug's introduction was prompted by the introduction of Crichton as a main character, which required a new, bigger shuttle to hold the crew. The original concept of Starbug was named White Midget and was going to be white. With the second episode seeing Starbug crashing into a snow-covered planet the design team decided to recolor the ship green to increase contrast and renamed it Green Midget, before realizing its similarity to a bug and renaming it once more as Starbug. Starbug is shown to have an internal cloaking device installed in the episode, Backwards. Starbug was used as the background for the Red Dwarf Series 3 DVD cover. Series 6 takes place a full two centuries after the final episodes of Series 5. The internal layout of Starbug differs from that of the vessel's appearances in previous episodes. The new design features four main areas, the cockpit in the front section, the midsection and galley on the middle section bottom deck, the observation room, which doubles as quarters and metabay, on the middle section top deck, and the engine room, which is over all three decks of the rear section. In addition, Starbug is finally armed with laser cannons in the episode, Gunmen of the Apocalypse. 1993, by Rogue Simulants looking for a challenge, for Series 7, Starbug was redesigned again, the model shots replaced with CGI, and the sets were made substantially larger. The complex explanation on this occasion for the redesign, first seen in the episode, Ticka to Ride. 1997, was due to a time paradox caused by the Dwarfas' battle with their future selves in the previous episode, Out of Time, 1993. Crichton explains that, Dimensional anomalies, caused by this time paradox had expanded the engineering section, the cargo bay section and the maintenance ducts by over 212%. Apparently parts of the upgraded future version of Starbug from the timeline they erased also come to co-exist with the present Starbug. The new model has a smaller cockpit window, as a result of the rest of the craft being larger, and newly backward angled legs, and its larger size allows for many extra rooms, including separate quarters, a metabay and a re-designed artificial reality suite. 
This version of Starbug would finally be destroyed when the ship crashes and explodes in the newly rebuilt Red Dwarf during Part 1 of Back in the Red 1999. Starbug reverted to its classic design in Series 10, as the production refurbished an old model from an earlier series. This model is briefly seen in Entangled 2012, though its cockpit is not. Series 11 revamped Starbug ship to marry the classic and seven designs. The swept back legs of Series 7 and 8 feature prominently, though with the larger cockpit glass of Series 6 and before. Starbug 1 is also written in larger text, the landing feet are much smaller, and the landing struts have extra joints to accommodate the legs transition from landing position to swept back flying position. A new cockpit also appears on screen in Series 11, the first time a Starbug cockpit has been seen since Series 8. Topic. Novels In the Red Dwarf novels, Starbug also crashes onto an ice world, a rogue planet which, after being captured in a star's orbit and having its ice melted, turns out to be the Earth itself, which was ripped from its orbit after being officially renamed, Garbage World, and turned into the solar system's rubbish tip. Following the thawing of the ice, Starbug is all but destroyed by extremely concentrated acid rain. However, Starbug is back and functional in both the following novels. Topic. Carbug Carbug is featured in the three-part special Red Dwarf. Back to Earth 2009. Designed by Mark Harris, it is a customized smart fortu that is coated in green vinyl in the same green as the original Starbug. It also has various added engines and wings to make it look like the bug. Chris Berry, doing his best Jeremy Clarkson impersonation, made a spoof Top Gear style feature about Carbug for the official Dave website. In the special, the Dwarfers find themselves in a hallucination caused by a despair squid. In this delusional state, they borrow Carbug from Swallow, a maker of movie props, in order to track down their creator after discovering that they are in fact fictional characters who have somehow escaped from a TV show called Red Dwarf. Within this hallucinations universe, Carbug originally belonged to the Red Dwarf fan club president and was stolen by Swallow after the fictional Series 9 had finished shooting. Topic. White Midget White Midget was going to be the second type of shuttle held aboard Red Dwarf in addition to Blue Midget. The introduction of the character Crichton necessitated the introduction of a larger shuttle. White Midget went through at least one redesign in the concept stage, which changed it to the shape of three spheres like the segments of a bug. It was later renamed Green Midget and later still Starbug. The Red Dwarf Companion includes a sketch of an unused shuttlecraft design that is described as being the design for White Midget. This also features an early Starbug design labeled, Green Midget. However, a ship called White Midget is mentioned in the episode, Body Swap. 1989, as a ship that Lister, in Rimmer's body, was going to use. However, after Cat volunteers to use it, they leave Red Dwarf with Blue Midget. According to the book in Series 3, White Midget did not exist, only Blue Midget did. A ship named White Midget would finally appear on screen in Series 7 episode, Ouroboros, 
in a flashback to Kachansky's alternate universe pre-accident. It is seen approaching Red Dwarf and appears to be a transport, passenger, personnel specialized vehicle as it delivers Dave Lister back to Red Dwarf from his shore leave on Mimas before the accident that wiped out the crew of Red Dwarf. White Midget may however be an alternate universe version to Blue Midget in Kachansky's dimension. The White Midget model used for Ouroboros was actually a converted Blue Midget model, last used in Series 3. Mike Tucker and freelancer Alan Brennan refurbished the original model, adding a nose cone, wings and back engines and repainted it. An unnamed, white ship would appear as the Canary's primary transport in Series 8. Topic. White Giant White Giant is a shuttlecraft on Red Dwarf that only features in the Red Dwarf novels and is never mentioned in the television series. It's never explained what the craft looks like. In the second Red Dwarf novel, Better Than Life 1990, Rimmer and Cat use White Giant to find Lister on Garbage World. Given that Starbug was destroyed by acid rain, and the destruction of Blue Midget, White Giant was left as the only remaining shuttlecraft for Red Dwarf. However, in the two sequel novels Last Human 1995 and Backwards 1996, Starbug has been rebuilt and White Giant never appears. White Giant may be the white ship which appears in Series 8 as the shuttle used by the Canaries, the so-called Suicide Squad who attempt dangerous missions. Topic. Guest ships Topic Nova Five The wreck of the Nova Five was discovered in the episode Crichton, nineteen eighty eight, and is in fact the first spacecraft seen in the show apart from Red Dwarf itself. The Nova 5 crashed an unspecified amount of time prior to the episode. All of the crew were killed in the crash except for three women who died an unknown time later. The hyperactive series 4000 service mechanoid Crichton was still attending to his long-dead masters now skeletons, when he encounters the members of Red Dwarf. The Nova 5 is never seen after that episode, but is mentioned several times afterwards and recalled by Crichton with much fondness. In the episode, Ouroboros, 1997, it is revealed that Crichton was responsible for the accident that killed the ship's crew. A reason has not been given in the series, but the novel Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers 1989, explains that the crash was caused by Crichton cleaning the sensitive computer terminals with soapy water. In the novel, Nova 5 is an American vessel owned by the Coca-Cola Company which was sent on a mission to induce the supernova of 128 supergiant stars in order to create a five-week-long message in the sky visible even in daylight, reading, Coke adds life. After the Red Dwarf crew finds the wreck it is brought aboard and repaired in order to utilize its duality jump engine, which could get the crew back to Earth within three months. However, although the ship is successfully repaired, circumstances prevent them from ever going through with it. Topic. The DNA ship. The DNA ship is described in the episode DNA 1991 as coming from a later period of Earth's history and having been crewed by a human 
who died after the DNA transforming machine on board caused him to grow three heads. This was an unnamed vessel of extremely advanced construction. So much so that Rimmer assumed it belonged to aliens intent on returning Glenn Miller. Its most notable feature, however, was the advanced machine for the transmogrification of human DNA. This machine was so advanced it is shown in this episode turning human being Lister into a chicken and back again without lasting effects. Crichton, who has a partially organic brain, accidentally uses the DNA machine in this episode to become human for a time. Topic. Wildfire Wildfire is Ace Rimmer's personal ship. Wildfire is a one-man craft with only a cockpit, and is run by a computer who has a crush on Ace Rimmer. It first appeared in the episode, Dimension Jump, 1991, which also introduced Ace Rimmer. Its second appearance was in the episode, Stoke Me a Clipper, 1997, where it was slightly redesigned, being small enough to fit inside Starbug's hangar. Wildfire was created in Ace Rimmer's own dimension by his team on Mimas, including Spanners. Lister, and is capable of crossing the barrier between alternate dimensions. Ace Rimmer agrees to test fly it in Dimension Jump, even though it is a one way ticket as there is no way of returning to his own dimension. Wildfire is never named in the TV series, it is only named in the Red Dwarf novel Backwards, 1996, where it was built on Europa rather than Mimas. In that novel, the novels had different stories to the TV series. Wildfire is taken by a teenage Lister and Cat after Ace, Crichton, and Rimmer die, so they can escape because Starbug is on an unstoppable collision course towards a planet. Topic: <laughs> Enlightenment. The Enlightenment only appears once, in the episode, Hello Ship, 1992. In, Hello Ship, the Enlightenment is depicted as a hologrammatic ship with no mass or volume and composed entirely of tachyons, or super light particles, and which has the ability to travel many multiples the speed of light and even create wormholes to travel instantaneously from one point in space to the other. The Enlightenment carries a hologrammatical crew of 2,000 no more holograms can be projected or it would be too much of a drain of the system. All of the crew are all top of their field, some are geniuses and most of them have an IQ over 200. They have abandoned all concept of relationships and family, and ship regulations say that each crew member must participate in sexual congress at least twice daily, for exercise and to relieve frustration. Since holograms can touch one another, revealed in parallel universe. And as the ship is also a hologram, holograms have a physical presence on board, being able to eat, drink, touch, feel and taste anything on the ship, although described as a computer-generated ship. The ship used in this episode is in fact a model made of transparent plastic. Topic. SSS Esperanto The SSS Esperanto was a designated ocean seeding ship featured in the episode Back to Reality 1992 
According to backstory in the episode, its three-year mission was to explore deep space and locate potential S3 or Earth-like planets that were covered by ocean, introduce primitive life forms to these extraterrestrial environments and finally speed up the evolutionary process. On one ocean planet the Esperanto succeeded in causing 5 million years worth of aquatic evolution in just three solar years. The SSS Esperanto crashed onto the ocean floor when it was attacked by one of the creatures she had helped create, a gigantic squid-like creature whose ink had hallucinatory and despair-inducing properties. The ink caused all the crew of the Esperanto, and even a stray fish, to have hallucinations which made them despair and commit suicide. The fish committed suicide by voluntarily closing its own gills. Topic. Legion Station This space station appears in the episode. Legion, 1993. The station was created by four of the most brilliant minds of the 23rd century. Although apparently abandoned, it is home to a Gestalt entity called Legion, made up of the combined consciousness of any beings who are on board the station. Topic. The Simulant Battle Cruiser This unnamed vessel appears in two episodes, Gunmen of the Apocalypse, 1993, and Rimmerworld, 1993. It is crewed by rogue simulants who roam deep space. In Gunmen of the Apocalypse, the simulants are described as looking for other vessels to hunt or compete with in battle for the purposes of sport, while in Rimmerworld, Crichton says that they hold victims so that they can torture them, some subjects staying alive in agony for over 40 years. In Rimmerworld, the simulant vessel is shown containing a number of components looted from other vessels, including an escape pod taken from a seating ship. It also incorporates a great deal of advanced technology, most notably a teleporter, and a large store of food in order to sustain the simulant's torture victims. The simulant ship is heavily armed with laser cannons, but it is apparently not very well armored, however, as a few laser blasts from Starbug in Gunmen of the Apocalypse are enough to blow the simulant ship into two halves. The ship resembles a cow's skull. Topic. Gemini 12 The Gemini 12 appears in the episodes, Out of Time, 1993, and Ticket to Ride, 1997. It is a mysterious spaceship capable of time travel and originating from the 28th century. According to backstory in Out of Time, her ill-fated maiden voyage was a covert reconnaissance mission to the 20th century, during which the unfortunate crew inadvertently contracted a 20th century influenza virus and died. Before their deaths, the crew sent the ship into deep space operating on autopilot. After falling into orbit around a gas giant, the Gemini 12 activated its unusual security system. A giant enveloping gas cloud which contained a reality minefield. This consisted of temporary bubbles of unreality which would confuse and disorientate any trespassers. In Out of Time, Starbug goes through the unreality bubbles, with the crew in cryogenic sleep so they wouldn't be affected by the unreality bubbles. 
when they find the Gemini 12, they take the time drive and install it on Starbug. Both episodes revolve around the use of the time drive, but it causes so many problems that the crew decide never to use it again. The Gemini 12 has had four different appearances, none of which are compatible. For out of time, the production team weren't able to build a new model and instead used stock footage from the episode Justice 1991. For the next episode, Ticka to Ride, there was a failed attempt to build an all-new CGI design before it was decided to use another ship that would appear later in the same series, the SS Centauri. Finally, for Ticka to Ride Remastered. On the Red Dwarf series 7 DVD, an entirely new design was made using CGI. Topic. SS Centauri The SS Centauri appears in the episode, Beyond a Joke, 1997. It is a derelict spaceship which the crew board in order to locate some spare mechanoid heads. However, the Centauri has been commandeered by a rogue simulant captain. Crichton meets another an identical mechanoid named Abel who is a servant to the simulant. The pair escape to Starbug, but the Centauri attacks them. The crew are saved by Abel, who sacrifices his life for them by attacking the Centauri with pent-up emotions, enticing the simulant to destroy himself and his ship in a fit of depression. Topic. Leviathan The Leviathan is a plague ship seen in the episode, Epideme, 1997, which the Dwarfers discover in a space glacier containing the Epideme virus that infects Lister, nearly killing him. It crashed because of an engine overload. It is very large. Topic. SS Silverberg The SS Silverberg is seen in the episode, Cassandra, 1999. It is aboard the Silverberg that the Canaries are depicted finding Cassandra, a computer who can predict the future with 100% accuracy. It was originally believed that the ship crashed and something devoured the crew, but in fact the Silverberg had been programmed to crash on autopilot so as to get rid of Cassandra. Topic. SS Manny Celeste The SS Manny Celeste appears in part one of the two-part story. Pete, 1999. Crichton, Kochansky and the Cat are sent on a Canary mission to the SS Manny Celeste to search for a missing Canary battalion. While aboard the Manny Celeste they find a group of Canaries, apparently frozen in place, with one of the men holding a time wand in his hand. The time wand is a device that can digitize time and release it to manipulate time fields around people or objects. Topic SS Trojan. The SS Trojan is a derelict space core quantum twister ship discovered by the crew in the episode Trojan. 2012. It was propelled by a quantum rod, a device which tunnels through spacetime by attracting together related matter which emerged from the Big Bang. Topic. Era The Erroneous Reasoning Research Academy, abbreviated as ERA, was a Space Corps research facility introduced in the episode, 
Entangled 2012 era was created to fuse together two previously disregarded theories into one. The staff of era were handpicked for their extraordinary ability in being consistently wrong. The idea was to re-educate these individuals so they may develop new, erroneous theories that would be combined to create great works of art. The project ultimately failed and the man behind the creation of ERA was so depressed he attempted suicide, but failed and lived into his 90s. The lead scientist at ERA was Professor Irene Edgington, inventor of the groinal exploder, who attempted to accelerate human evolution only to accidentally turn herself into a chimpanzee and get stuck in stasis for three million years. Topic. S. S. Samsara The S. S. Samsara is a crashed spaceship featured in the episode, Samsara, 2016. The ship contains a karma drive which was based on the, Justice Tech, featured in the episode, Justice, 1991. The karma drive was intended to reward or punish crew based on their behavior. As shown in a flashback, the karma drive dealt punishment to two members of the Samsara crew for having a continual extramarital affair. The two crew members subsequently decided to alter the karma drive settings to reward bad behavior and punish good. This change ultimately causes the ship to crash. Prior to the crash, the two crew members escaped in an escape pod that utilized stasis capabilities. In an attempt to save themselves from the karma drive the remaining crew resorted to lewd and extremely violent behavior. However, this proved unsuccessful as they were ultimately killed through a flash fire. Topic Asclepius's station described to be in possession of advanced technology, this unnamed space station appeared in the episode, Give and Take, 2016, and was home to Asclepius, an automated surgeon from the late 23rd century skilled in all medical procedures, both physical and psychological. It was also home to Snacky, an automated snack dispenser with an unsophisticated appearance, and Romero G. Gonzalez, a stasis booth engineer who through a series of missteps killed himself while attempting to find a way to time travel using stasis booth technology. Topic. S. S. Nautilus. The SS Nautilus was an unmanned Space Corps spaceship from the 24th century featured in the episode, Officer Rimmer, 2016. Powered via matter-antimatter propulsion engines, the Nautilus was designed to be piloted completely by autopilot and droids, however when coming across something of interest or when in need of non-automated assistance, the Nautilus would bio-print its crew from a bio-printer that would create clones of people from the bio-printer's registry as aid. Topic. Nova 3 The Nova 3 was a crashed vessel launched a century prior to its successor the Nova 5, in which Crichton served, appearing in the episode, Chrysis, 2016. The Nova 3 was on a voyage in search of the SIU station in hopes of contacting and conversing with the universe itself, but crashed for unknown reasons. On board the Nova 3 its only survivor, similar to Crichton, was Butler, a fellow service mechanoid of the earlier 3000 series. 
However, unlike Crichton, Butler broke his programming by himself and began to develop works of art, engage in peaceful friendship with GELF tribes including the Sakenyako, and eventually contact and converse with the universe as was the original intended goal of the Nova Three. Topic. SIU Station The SIU Station, Search for Intelligent Universe Station, was a research facility appearing in the episode Crisis 2016. Located in the depths of deep space, the SIU station intended to prove the theory that the universe was a sentient entity and to establish contact with it. Topic. Ships mentioned by name Topic. Oregon The Oregon is mentioned by Captain Hollister in The End. 1988, citing example of a ship that had experienced an animal quarantine-related incident, apparently involving rabbits. Topic. S. S. Scott Fitzgerald The S. S. Scott Fitzgerald is mentioned in the episode, Better Than Life. 1988. It is the ship to which the 11th generation AI computer Gordon resides. Topic. S. S. Augustus The S. S. Augustus is a ship Crichton served on before the Nova 5. The crew all died of old age, suggesting it may have been on a long-term voyage. Crichton mentions it during the episode, Ducked Soup, 1997, when the crew roams around Starbucks vents. He mentions it to Lister along with the Nova 5 as ships where the crew, abandoned, him. Topic. S. S. Einstein The S. S. Einstein is mentioned in Part 3 of the story, Back in the Red, 1999. It is a derelict spaceship which Crichton suggests the crew should head towards when he discovers that they are frighteningly low on fabric softener. Topic. S. S. Hermes The S. S. Hermes is mentioned in Only the Good 1999. The spaceship is reduced to a skeletal carcass after a highly corrosive and chameleonic microbe gets loose on board and eats away at the very ship itself, killing the crew in the process. Because of this, little is known about the Hermes, or the nature of the ship devouring virus it fell victim to although it is stated that the virus is synthetic. The deadly microbe then escapes on a pod from the wrecked vessel, and is unknowingly taken aboard Red Dwarf. <laughs> Notes <laughs>